turning your copy of God's Word to Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11, as we continue to preach through the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 11, we'll be picking it up at verse 33, and our text will be verses 33 to 36, Luke 11, 33. This is the word of God. No man, when he has lighted a candle, puts it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that they which come in may see the light. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, Thy whole body also is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body also is full of darkness. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. May thy whole body, therefore, be full of light. Having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light. As when the bright shining of a candle doth give thee light. Amen. Grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God is forever. Children, how many of you, children, can see in the dark? Children, how many of you need a light to see in the dark? When your parents turn on the light, where is the light, children? Where do you see the light? Is it under the bed, children? Is the light under the bed? How about under the kitchen sink? Is the light under the kitchen sink? Or under the bathroom sink? No, right? Where is the light? Above us, isn't it? When your parents turn on the light, the light shines the whole room. It brightens the whole room up, right? And you see, and it penetrates the darkness. Children, it would be silly, wouldn't it be? Wouldn't it be silly to turn on the light and the light is under the bed? Because you couldn't see anything, right? Wouldn't it be silly if when you turn on the light, the light was underneath the kitchen sink? Wouldn't that be silly? It wouldn't make no sense, right? Well, children, do you know that many adults put their light under the bed? Do you know, children, that many adults put their light away from people? They hide it. That makes no sense, right? Is a light meant to be hidden? No, right? A light is meant to be seen. But Jesus here is telling us not to hide the light which he has given to us. And you know, children, that means that he's telling adults, stop hiding your light. And so, children, this is what I'll be preaching about today. Encouraging us not to hide the light, to let it shine before all people. And so, congregation, today we'll be celebrating the Lord's Supper and continuing through our series in Luke. And as we consider this text, consider in light of the Supper as well and what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be in union and communion with Jesus Christ. As he gives us this analogy here of being light. We'll look at what this lighted candle is and what happens when we obscure it. And then finally, the need of our eye to be single. In our text before us, we have Christ speaking about candles, lamps, and lights. And so, children, I want, to, I want you to think about lights. Where do lights come from? Children, have you guys ever thought about where the light comes from? You know, you turn on the switch and the lamp on the ceiling of your room comes on, right? Or maybe you have a lamp next to your bed and you turn it on. 
How about a lantern? Children, you guys ever seen a lantern that you can carry? Carry it around, you light it up, you carry it around. You know, Nevada was a mining state a long time ago, and, and the miners were going to the, into the caves, into the holes in the ground, carrying a lantern, right? They had no electricity, carrying a lantern into, into the caves. Children, what happens when the power goes out? What do you, your parents do? What do your parents do? They break out what? Flashlights and candles, don't they? They bring out candles and flashlights. Well, you see, our Lord Jesus Christ in this text, children, he's talking about different sources of light. See in verse 33, where it says, light to light. And it says, when he has lighted a candle, which is to light, it means to set fire to. Remember back then, they didn't have electricity. They didn't flick a switch and lights came on. They needed to start a little mini fire, like a match. And then they would put it onto the candle so that it could be lit. That is what he's speaking of here. You light something to light the candle or the lamp. And then he says that they light a candle or a lantern when they light it up. And once the candle or lamp is lit, they put it on what? A candlestick. So they what? Could carry it wherever they want. Think about it. You put a candle on a candlestick so you can carry it. So that wherever you go, that light dispels the darkness. Think about a candlestick like a flashlight without batteries. You can carry it wherever you want. And then the verse ends with the word light again. And here is a different Greek, tech, a Greek word, one that is used at the beginning of the verse. And it, it's actually speaking of light itself, not the lighting of light, but the actual light, the actual light, like the light of the sun or the stars. And when you look at the sun or you look at the stars, they give off their own light. Then at verse 34, the word light at the beginning is the word for candle or lantern. So Jesus is teaching us that the lantern or the candle of the body is the eye. Children, did you know your eye is the candle of your body? Think about it. Have you ever tried to walk anywhere with your eyes covered? You can't see anything, right? You might stumble into something. But once you remove your hand, you can see. You see the eye is a candle of your body. And then we see that the Lord Jesus tells us that when the body is full of light, that word light here is a different Greek word. It means being composed of light or being well lit being full of light. You see, the body becomes light and becomes brightness. And then when we get to verse 35, it says that the light, that word light, is another Greek word. So you keep track how many words Christ is using here for the one word translated as light. You see, in, third, in verse 35, he's then teaching us that the light is the brightness of a lantern or star or fire. In the morning when the sun rises, it becomes very bright. And we say, what a bright sunshine. Very clear for everyone to see. No one can miss the brightness of the sun's light. And then in verse 36, the first and second word for light means brightness. And then the last word, which is translated candle or lantern, here means something that gives off light or enlightens the mind. And so Christ uses four distinct Greek words here, which are all translated to English as either light or brightness. Now, why do I bring this up? It's not to show off what I know about Greek. It's not to criticize the translation at all. 
It is because words matter. And especially when Jesus, who is the word of God, uses them, it should matter to us. And these nuances are important for us to further appreciate the text. Our Lord is teaching his disciples, which includes all of you who have embraced Jesus Christ, how we are to conduct ourselves in this world as his disciples, and how our candle is to shine and to light the world. How we as Christians should be full of brightness and sunshine, full of light. The very first thing we must understand is this. That if you are to be light, you must first have received light. You cannot light, you know, a candle cannot give off light until it's lit. Until it's lit, the candle is dead. Who lights the candle in your life? But when you were, when you were without Christ, you were dead. Dead in sin. Holy Spirit gives life. In Genesis, we learn this very early. And he breathes into the man that he had formed from the ground. The Spirit. And he became a living soul. Does not Jesus say this in, Rome, in John 3? To enter into the kingdom, you must be born again. You must have light. So you see, the source of all light is God, the Holy Spirit who enlightens us, Jesus Christ who gives us light. Remember that Jesus says that he is the light of the world. So all, so all who embrace him receive light. And the Holy Spirit enlightens our minds, removing the darkness of sin and false religion. For the Apostle Paul says, without Christ, our minds are darkened. All those in this world who live without Christ have darkened minds. They have no light. And so we too then are called to be light. Christ being the light of the world, we also are called to be lights of the world. Jesus says something that all people would immediately understand here in this text when he says when you light a candle you don't put it in a secret place or under a bushel he, he understands that people will take that as nonsense children even know this this is why I ask them when you light a candle or turn on the light or turn on a flashlight you don't hide it it is to be put forth so all can see it And Jesus is telling us that you are to be light, to be the lights to the world, for this world is in darkness. And so if you use these categories of in extrovert and introvert, and you call yourself introvert, guess what? I have some bad news for you. You have to be the center of attention to bring Christ all glory in this world. For you are to shine as bright as the light. You cannot hide it. All the world is to see Christ in you. First Thessalonians 5.5, 5, Paul summarizes Christ's teaching this way. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. We are to be children of the light. So how bright does your light shine? How well lit is your candle or your lamp? Is it bright like a city on a hill? Or has it grown dim due to your dipping the lamp into the darkness of the world? Obscuring the light with the covering or shutters of sin? You may say, but I'm a Christian. My parents were, or are. I go to church. I do this and that. Why would my lamp be dimmed? Why would the light from my candle be obscured? 
You see, your life does not depend on your parents. Your life does not depend on the externals. Remember this. Who was Jesus speaking to here? Was he not speaking to people of the covenant? People who knew the Old Testament? Was he not speaking to the Pharisees? They thought themselves righteous and full of light. Yet the Lord rebukes them for their light was a cheap reflection of their traditions of men. They had the very light of God's word, but they did not use it. They put shutters over them. The shutters of traditions of men. Children, if you were out in a dark spot in your backyard in the nighttime and you lost your favorite toy, would you depend on the light from those stars far, far away to find your toy? That light is bright, but not bright enough to find your small toy in your dark backyard, isn't it? Would you not turn on the light to look, to find your lost toy? Well, see, this is what Christ is telling us to do, to cast off all things that blur or dim the light he has given to us. We are not to be a dim light in this world. We are not to be just reflection of light. The moon does not give off its own light. The moon reflects the light of the sun in the darkness. Our, our lamp our candle is not to be faint. It is to be bright. It is not to reflect off worldly things, but it is to reflect off Jesus Christ, the Son. So, brethren, I ask you, does the world see the light you emit? Do they see the light of Jesus Christ, your Son, S-U-N, is the candle of your soul on a candlestick. Meaning that wherever you go, it shines. Is the lamp of your being on a lampstand for all to see the brightness of the gospel? Or have you obscured it? Have you tinted it, as it were, so that the light is not that bright? Well, I ask you to examine yourself Examine yourselves, brother. Now, our Lord Jesus is not saying, as modern liberals and self-help guru types of people say, that you have your own light. You are to let shine your light. Everyone in this world has their own little light, and we need to help everyone have their little light shine. You know, it's like the same kind of reasoning that everyone has their truth. You have your truth, I have my truth. And we can agree to disagree, but one truth cannot triumph over another truth because we all have our own truths. The Lord is not saying this here. It's nonsense. You do not have your own light. The people of the world who are not in Christ don't have any light. If anything... It is a false light. It is like the light of the moon. It reflects off of something else. Because if you are not in Jesus Christ, you do not have true light. But darkness. You have darkness. A person who is not in Christ is an unrepentant sinner. So what light could such a person possibly have? For even their good works are smeared in vile sin. No. The only true light we can possess is the light that Jesus Christ gives to his disciples. All else is counterfeit. So do not be deceived by the philosophy of this world, my brethren. The Holy Spirit is the one who gives light. He is the one that enlightens us. 
to see Christ. And then Christ causes us to be the lights of the world. Look at the warnings that Christ gives at verse 34 to 36. He says, The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, thy whole body also is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body also is full of darkness. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. For thy whole body, therefore, be full of light. Having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light. As when the bright shining of a candle does give thee light. There's a warning. Do not eclipse your light. We recently had a solar eclipse. Children, do you guys see it? Or feel it? The solar eclipse when the moon got in front of the sun and it blocked out the sun's light for a bit and it got dark and windy and you can't see it directly because it's still burning. That was cool, wasn't it? However, what is not cool is when your light is eclipsed. When the light that Christ has given to you is eclipsed by sin, by the pleasures of the flesh, by your own selfishness and own self-centeredness. The Lord says that our eye is a candle or light of the body. If our eye is full of light, so are, will our bodies be. But if our eye is full of darkness, our bodies will be full of darkness. So to say that you have the light, but refuse to walk in the light, is contemptible before God. If you say that you can believe in God, and also partake of the pleasures of the flesh, then you treat with contempt and indifference the blessings of Jesus Christ, and then despise the light. And how many people are out there running around saying they are Christian but enjoy the pleasures of the flesh? Such people have their lights dimmed if they have any light at all. And those lights that are dimmed can be snuffed out. Snuffed out so that they no longer shine any light. And so these things of selfishness and self-centeredness dim our light. We, want, we say that we want people to believe in Jesus Christ. But when it comes to getting those who hear to become disciples, do you suddenly retreat into your selfish shell, dimming your light to not be bothered? Do you trim your candle? Do you say you want to love your husband or love your wife more and more, yet when it comes to it, you are willing to shine Christ's light when your loved one plunges into some kind of darkness? I'm willing to shine the light on their predicament to help them out of that dark tunnel. Do you want to be the light of Christ, yet when it comes to being the light of Christ, do you back out? And give up sinful excuses to do so. Then you are dimming it. You are covering it. You're putting shutters over it. And this is what Christ doesn't want us to do. There are people who go around saying, I don't need to be a member of any church. I'm a Christian, so I'm the church. You may ask, what good is it being a member of the local church under pastors and elders? <clears throat> Why even be part of the church? Well, what happens when you want to start a campfire and you put just one log in the campfire? How long would that campfire last? Not very long. You need a bundle of sticks in there to get that fire going, don't you? You see, if you believe that you can not be part of any church, to be a Lone Ranger Christian, you will fall away. You will fall prey to your lusts, and you will burn out. 
Christ calls us to be part of the church. Christ calls us to be part of his people, to be under pastors and elders. Because Christ has given pastors and elders to the church for people to be under, to be shepherded by them. To despise that is to despise what Christ has given. And if you despise what Christ has given, what kind of light are you really shining for? Because pastors, and we see this in many passages of the scripture, like Revelation, are called the candles of the church. They are to light the way of God to his people. And so to despise pastors and elders and the church overall is to despise the light that Christ has given to the church. So how can you be a Lone Ranger Christian? And the light here is not just a light that we shine for the purposes of evangelism. Matthew 5, 16 Jesus tells us this, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You see, we must have good works in every area of our life. And it goes beyond evangelism. It goes into mercy, acts of mercy, acts of helping others of living for Christ towards others, of being in communion with Christ every day in your reading of the word and in prayer. We must couple our testimony of Christ with good works, not for salvation, but to demonstrate that we are his servants who conduct his works in this world. What if a person is preaching the word of God out in the open, in public, and a person comes up to him and says, I love your message, but I'm hungry. I haven't eaten for a whole day or two because I don't have food. And what if that preacher says to him, you know what? Get away from me, kid. You're bothering me. I'm here to give the bread of life, not the bread of the body. Go get a job. Is he shining the light of Christ when he says that? He may sound pious. Pious is a Pharisee. What did Christ do many times? We have at least two examples of this. Did he not sit down thousands of people and feed them after he preached? So they wouldn't go away faint? So when we are out there, be ready to clothe people, to feed them, to help them. So that your message matches your works. And your works, your message. Maybe you say you're a good husband, but you abuse your wife and mistreat your children. How is this being a godly light to the world? In truth, when we say we're one thing but do another thing, that's an indication that there is a sickness of the soul, a darkness of the body. So examine yourselves. Examine yourselves. Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 4, 6, For God who, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. To truly have this light of the knowledge of God and Jesus Christ is to have the light of Christ truly shine through the darkness of our hearts and to show forth mercy to people. To demonstrate love to others. Christ said, this is how people will know you. The love you have one towards another. How can you love 
when you're being abusive to your loved ones? How can you love when you're not willing to help others? How can you love when you're not willing and able to provide for those who need help? Examine yourselves. And Christ wants us to turn up the brightness of our lamps, to cast out every shadow from every corner of our bodies, so that we are seen as lights of Christ, shining brightly, radiant, and beautiful in the sight of God towards all people. But darkness in the body brings both physical and spiritual illness. And so I want, to exam I want you to examine yourselves. Do you have a sickness which cannot be comprehended? Then search out yourselves to see if the root cause is not really a natural illness, like genetics or some kind of sickness going around. Maybe your illness has its fountain in sin because your eye has become dark. For sin does in fact physically impact one's body. This is why Jesus says here, when thine eye is evil, thy body also is full of darkness. And you know what the word here in Greek for evil is? It's not always, it does not always mean ethical or moral evil. It means disease, blindness, or other forms of hardship and toil. A diseased eye brings a diseased body. So brethren, examine yourself. Ensure there are no shutters in your lap that can obscure the light Christ has given to you. And lastly, our eye must be single. This can also be understood as having a single mind focused on Christ. Elijah asked the people, how long halt or limp ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. And then to paraphrase, paraphrase the rest of what he says, if your self-interests are more important, then follow yourselves. But you cannot follow both. You can either follow God or follow your self-interests. You cannot follow both. In the New Testament, we are told not to be double-minded. James tells us a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. How's your spiritual walk? Is it unstable? Are you saying, I, I try to grow in my sanctification, but I don't seem to be growing? Well, maybe you have a double mind. Maybe your eye is not single. Maybe you are halting or limping between two opinions. Examine yourself. Part of following Christ is to do good works in his name. To give a cup of cold water to your neighbor. Not just your neighbor, to your enemy. Yet, why do we find it very difficult to give a cup of cold water to someone who seeks Christ? Or to one who is your brother or sister? Is it because you think you are too good or more spiritual than they are? Then your eye is not single, and you limp between two opinions. Do not be double-minded. Or is it because you think, I shouldn't be so strict in my doctrine. They're too strict, so therefore I'm going to do what I want. You're halting between two opinions, limping between two opinions. Your eyesight is to be focused on one object, and that is Jesus Christ. What he did, dying for sinners. Our eyesight is to be, should be focused to glorifying God and doing his will. Our eyesight is driven with this desire. It should be driven with this desire, namely, to please God and to be commended by God. Yet, if we cannot set aside our selfishness, our self-centeredness, our pride and arrogance, 
How will our eyesight be truly focused on Jesus Christ? It will be at best blurry. Our eyes will have, as it were, sand in it. Children, how many of you ever had sand or dirt in your eyes? Doesn't that hurt, children, to have sand in your eyes? It cuts it up. It scratches up your eye and it burns, doesn't it? And you want your parents to blow it out or to pour water in there to wash it out. But when we are double-minded, when we don't have a single eye focused on Christ, we're in essence throwing sand in our eye. Being blurred. Unable to focus on Christ. A Christian disciple is then seen by the light of his conduct, his manner of speech. His faith is backed up by his word, his works. As James says, you have faith, show me your works. So brethren, is your eye single? Are you focused on Christ or focused on self? As a Christian pastor once wrote, if we have religion, let us have a thorough one. If we are Christians, let us be decided. Decide today to follow Christ and to commit to him totally. Don't halt, don't limp between two opinions. But if you cannot, then be honest with yourselves. And don't take on the name of Jesus to yourself. Christian, when your eye is single, then you can focus on Jesus. When your body is full of light, the world will not miss it. No one can miss the brightness of a lamp. Children, you too need to learn and understand that Jesus seeks to have you to be a candle, to be a lamp, to be a light in this world. For you to shine like the sun in front of everyone. How? How can you, children, shine like the sun? By first believing in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That he saves you from all your evil and wicked works. Christians, trim your lamps. Ensure it's full of oil. And has a clean burn for all to see Christ in you. Be wise like those virgins who had their lamp ready for when the bridegroom came. Shine like the city on a hill, and the Lord will use you to draw men unto himself. And this can only be done by following Christ's word in verse 35. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. Christian, as you come to the Lord's table, come with a repentant heart. If what has been said has pricked your heart, convicted you, then repent. Confess your sin, repent, and come with a contrite heart to the Lord. He wants you to be focused on him, to have a single eye on him. Not to be eclipsed by selfish and self-centered passions. If you're putting other people first in your life, above Christ, take heed. Because the Lord may take that person away from you. Christ is to be first. God is to be first. Brethren, meditate upon the word that has been preached. Think about the word that was preached yesterday. Christ calls you to live for him, to honor him, to glorify him. And we do this by being the light he has called us to be, to flee from evil, cast away the darkness from your hearts and souls, and to adhere to Christ. Do not place your lamp under the bed. Do not place it in the basement. Light your candle so that it shines brighter than the lights on the street. Remove all the shutters, all the blinds, all the tint from your lamp 
that all may see that you belong to Christ and that Christ shines in you. And as you come to the Lord's table, seek this from God, that the Holy Spirit may illuminate your minds, your hearts, your souls, to see the beauty and the majesty of Christ's redemption, which the bread and the wine symbolize. And when you depart today, purpose to shine bright for Christ by performing good works unto him and towards others. As Paul exhorted the Philippians at chapter 2, verse 15, I exhort you as well. <clears throat> that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the day. <clears throat> Amen. Let us stand and pray. Our Lord and our God, we come before thee in Christ to give you thanks for the preached word, for this text, which at first seems simple, but it is a hard challenge. It is not an easy task to be your disciple. You have told us that if we are to embrace you, we are to sit and count the costs. We are to give up our pleasures and to follow you. Lord, may we not be as that rich young man was who desired to follow Jesus, but he could not give up the world and went away sad. Lord, may we be decided to be your people, to be your disciples, that the words holiness to the Lord that are written on our foreheads may shine bright to all people. And when people see us, may they see Christ. Be with us, Lord. May your spirit grant us the grace and the power to perform your duties. This we do ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.